Okay, so just to just to remind myself and everybody else, this is the wire that burned. This one that came down here uh, and connects over here and goes out on its way to the electrical selector. The electrical selector is basically the panel of push buttons you push to select soft. Okay, now it's also connected here. It goes through this capacitor down into this area which is the coin switches. There's a plug with one, two, three, four wires on it goes to the coin switches. Or it comes from the coin switches, that might be a better way to put it. So when the switch closes, something happens here. So these, this wire, and this wire, the only two leaving this area, heading over here to the to the uh, memory unit, if I can call it that. Credit solenoids is the proper name for it, and it energizes either this one or this one. reset bracket, maybe six, six, six play, three play, one play, six plays, six plays. And they're just giving the music away at that point. Oh, this goes to ground. Ground on socket saddle near pin two. So the other side of these relays, all of them, there's another ground there. They just go to ground. So you energize them. Good chunk. What are you energizing them with? A DC voltage. Here. Hey, now that's that's the wire. That's the burned wire right here. This is the burning wire, and it's this wire. This this wire didn't burn here, but I don't I don't know that it didn't get hot. I have no idea. See, not much of the mechanism in the jukebox worked. In fact, none of it worked. I put the coin in actually didn't hear anything whatsoever. No sound whatsoever coming out of the machine. No relay snapping, nothing. And then smoke came out. So I'm pretty sure you can hear these solenoids uh, snapping inside. But I didn't hear that. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. Maybe the sound of the coin dropping through the machine covered the sound, the quiet sound of this. I don't know, but I don't think any of these operated. And that would suggest that there's a short circuit occurring somewhere ahead of here, like in the short circuit on this side. Now, what, what's going on in these capacitors? The other side of these capacitors is to ground. Okay, so although it's a little tenuous, I think I've been able to implicate any of these three capacitors. If they failed, then there's a ground sitting right here. Looks, you know, now normally the jukeboxes only take quarters. Uh, if you put another coin in, you don't get anything out of it. You gotta put a quarter in, in the way they're set up. But if you do put another coin in, it will get selected through the coin box and shot at the appropriate switch. That will apply a ground. If that were to happen, now I, I know what I put in. I put a quarter in. I put two quarters in actually. Uh, well, let's let's see if these capacitors, if any of them are shorted. Uh, I think it's time to change them anyway. But, uh, I think we can pretty much agree it wouldn't be a good thing if they were shorted. And these are... Okay, so now when I look at them, it's easy to see. They're all going to this, this ground terminal here. And they are coming in and connecting to... This is the terminal where the wires 
from the coin switch has come back. Oh, this one is connected in those terminals too. Okay, so wait a second here. I assume that yellow one was this one out here because I see three identical brown ones. I'm guessing it's these three. And then this one. Yeah, yeah, it's also connected. It's also connected essentially to this terminal point, if you like, on the back of this jack. Okay. Let's test all those capacitors. Now, since my intention is to replace them all, I might as well uh, lift them all from there, uh, from this end. I'll just lift one terminal off and then test each one. I'm just looking to see if I should try desoldering them. But Give it a go. up this way at the point. worth trying to get it off. There's such a high risk of doing some damage while you're wiggling and jiggling. Just cut it away. One. There's a capacitor on each one of these terminals. for now. Well, that's kind of curious there, what I just found. This, uh, this connection here. That's not, that's not a normal thing, to solder a wire out of space. That wire's been cut. I think that wire's been cut and re-soldered during a test of some sort. Hmm. Don't know what to make of it. Cut away the capacitor here. Three to test. Okay, let's go over to the test area here. Okay, so I've got the capacitor checker connected to one of the three capacitors here, set for leakage test. Watch the eye. Here we go. 25 volts. Oh, that's really good. 150. Not so good at 150. Okay. Now let's switch to another capacitor. If we get anything different, 25 volts, looks good, 150, slightly better. And the last one, 
I'm really looking for one that's shorted here to make my story work. 25, looks okay, not so good. 150, not very good at all. So, okay, uh, somewhat leaky capacitors. Again, uh, this is a pretty heavy duty unit here. A few milliamps are leaking here and there, or microamps, whatever it might be. Uh, pretty hard to believe it's going to disturb the operation of this big machine and burn up a wire. I don't think you could have a sufficient fault current leaking through those capacitors. But I suppose they might cause some kind of secondary effect uh, preventing a relay operation and then that relay not operating puts the machine into a state where it burns up that wire. I don't know. I am certainly don't purport to understand all the circuitry and all the functions and all the situations in something like this. But we'll change those three capacitors anyway. Get rid of them. Now's the time. Okay. Three out, and are they all the same? I'm sure they are. Fast. Ooh. Fast. Point oh one. What's fast mean? Point oh one. Okay, let's check the capacitance on one of these. that they're leaky. I think just about every capacitor is going to test a little leaky on this tester. So leaky we can't perform this test. Now point, point 0.01 is here. So here we go. Oh yeah. Now the eye is failing to open. Well, it's an indication that there's some leakage current going through it. This is what I'm learning about this device how to really read it properly. So, um, even though it reads 0.015, the capacitance could be quite a bit less. The effective capacitance, I really don't know for sure. But it's hard to see how a leaky capacitor gets more capacitance. I think it just, just throws the bridge off in here. And that doesn't have any effect on anything in this setting. Okay. Well, that's the story on that. Now, let me get uh, three new 0.01 capacitors. What should we do about that yellow one? Uh, let's see, the yellow one, yellow one. We could try testing it right in the circuit here on the assumption that, in fact, the, even though it's in the circuit, it's a really open circuit. Let's give it a try. These are the leads to the capacitor checker. Back over. 25 volt leakage. No, no. I, I think, well, either that's a dead short or the test is bogus because it's still on the circuit. Now, now I have to take it out and really check it properly. Yeah, that's what's going to have to happen here. 
Okay, so maybe I can desolder this one. So it looks like it's barely on there. It's a beautiful day here in uh, Toronto. So I don't want to be down in my shop here. Too much today. Oh my God, it just came right off. Okay, let's hook up the tester there. There we go. Back over. Ready, here we go. 150, that's good. 250, that's good. Nothing wrong with that capacitor. Just for fun, let's check it for capacitance. The yeah, eye is opening wide. Way up here at 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And that could be 0.03. There's actually a 3 right there for crying out loud. 0.03. So it's good. It's perfectly good. Excellent, I guess. Well, you know, if it was shorted right out, I'd be happier yet. Okay, so I'm going to reconnect that one because it's kind of at the back here. Just leaves the other three. Just checking again the size. It's, it's 0.01, wasn't it? 0.01. Okay, let me get three 0.01 capacitors ready here. 